Hello guys and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program with me, Wall377. And today we're going to be launching some satellites. Um, let's go to the VAB. I think that's quite cool. Um, next we need, it needs some power I guess, so um, what I'm going to do is place uh, maybe one of these here. That can sit on. That's quite, that's quite nice. This satellite's primary data, uh, primary plan even, primary mission is going to be collecting uh, data from the ground and we're going to put a few of these on uh, one, two, three of these okay so that's quite cool uh, and what I might put on here is um, perhaps we would like um, some quantum struts I guess you know I'm a big fan of these bad boys so we could put one there and put another one there. So it's kind of like tethered to it. It's going to look a bit weird but I think it'll be cool. And just one there. So it's all kind of a solid unit. There's going to be no wobble. It's going to look awesome. And also what I'm going to have is some cool solar panels. And uh, that, that'll be it. That'll be it for now. So that's going to be our main design. So how are we going to get this up into space? Well. I'm going to start with a small decoupling node, stack decoupler, there. Okay, and that's going to be attached to... Not that, that's far too big. Um, we've got a smaller one, I believe, haven't we? This one here. So that can be attached to something else, um, probably one of these, I think. Oops, just clicked outside the window. Uh, that's fine. Let's move all this up a bit. I want to move the whole thing up. And now I want another quantum strut on here, and that's going to be pointed towards the middle. It should keep all this from wobbling too much. This we want our fuels. So because this is going to be a quick mission, and we've got lots of main cells, I don't think we need any um, RCS or anything. Launch. Okay guys, welcome to the launch part one. I have tested this mod already, and as a result, um, I've already got some of the mapping done. So this is the, the ISAT, the ISA map uh, system here. Um, you want scan on which means that this dish will scan the ground as you fly over it and once we're in orbit we'll get into a polar orbit which means um, you either want to turn towards north or 180 and that means hopefully um, you'll get total coverage of that map over time uh, and it also depends on the height but we'll get into that in a minute so but for now I'm going to turn it off because it just gets in the way and I'm going to launch um, in three two one Beautiful stuff. So, um, okay guys, it's in a nice circular orbit now. I don't know how circular this is, but it, it, it doesn't look that circular, but it will do. Okay, so now if I look at my map sat nav, you should be able to see, um, I took off here, and this is the orbit. And now if I speed this up a little bit, uh, you'll notice that it's, it continues to map the ground. Um, so you see this bit here where it's, it's discovering this map area? This is where it's actually scanning the train. And I, I don't know how this works, but it's pretty awesome. Um, in that the darker it is, the deeper it is, and the whiter it is, um, the higher it is. So you can see we're not going to get the poles here because of the orbit that we've chosen. It doesn't quite map this area here, so this area is going to remain black, blank, which is this area up here. And the same with the bottom. So the faster you speed this up, um, the faster it will scan, which is quite useful. Excuse me. Um, and if we put the grid overlay, you'll see that the keythane grid is now visible. And all we need to do is go back to our map view, and we are going to decouple. 
that. We never needed these stages, but that's going to come useful later on because to get to the moon and to uh, uh, Juna and all the other places, this is going to be invaluable. Uh, so let's have a look. We've got plenty of electric charge. I'm going to activate these. Um, so remember these three pods? If I activate these now, they'll begin collecting data from the planet's surface. Um, and if I speed up, that thing will go away. We can put that back on so we can communicate back with Kerbin. And we can turn around, because I believe I actually designed this to face this way, believe it or not. Okay, that's quite cool. And then we want to extend these panels. And we had another one, didn't we, there? And that's our cool little um, our probe. And that's just going to sit here and gather data from the surface. We can have a look at IMAP I I at any time. And if we go here, um, we should be able to see where our plane is. It's already started detecting the Keythane uh, deposits. And if we speed this up, because we've got three of them on there, there's no gaps, it's quite happy speeding along and collecting data as it goes. The faster you go, um, the less it will map. Um, but because I've got three on there, that's a lot better normally. Oh dear, so it stopped for some reason. I don't know why that might be. Presumably because... Um, yeah, something to do with the orientation of the, the satellite. The scanners just can't reach it at certain, at certain places, which is fine. I mean, you just keep this running for enough time and you'll soon scan the whole up, which is quite cool. So yeah, join me in a little while and this will all be scanned. So bye for now. Hello guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. So as you can see, um, the map now has, you know, mapped quite a lot of it. It's doing overlaps and you've got this cool pattern um, that happens due to the orientation of the of the satellite um, so occasionally it goes into a spin you, it's difficult to correct this actually let me uh so it's been doing this for a, a day not in Kerbal time not in my time um, <laughs> in case there's any doubt uh, but there you go it's still orbiting somewhere here somewhere. It's actually disappeared from here, which is a bit curious. Um, but it is there somewhere. Flying around and around and around Kerbal. And taking readings all the while. So yeah, what will happen eventually is that all these gaps will be filled in. And um, all these gaps will be filled in. And you'll just know where everything is. And you know, then you can land here and you've got plenty of keythane and everything else. So that's that's how, what the probe, the value of the probe is. Um, and I think that's it's quite a useful tool because it actually gives you a reason to send probes first before you send out different crafts. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, having missions like this are are very cool. God, I love the the weird patterns. It's like a I don't know some sort of um, kaleidoscope thing. I don't know what they used to call it. Spirograph. Yeah one of those. So um, that's that's kind of all I wanted to show you about the probes. I'm going to probably launch a few of these in the future to go to different moons and stuff because um, something we have, haven't have really been uh, looking at is interstellar travel, uh, not interstellar, sorry, interplanetary, so going to EVE and MOHO. I mean EVE is absolutely beautiful so it would be a shame if we didn't go back there shortly. Um, which I might do in the next episode. So I hope you enjoyed this one, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.